Have you come to this video because you're like me, your inbox drives you mad? You're perhaps going to join the millions of people around the world who struggle with constant emails flying into their inbox just when they think they've got on top of one set or they've got a nice organising process to deal with those. More come in, you get overwhelmed. Well, this video is going to show you how you can get on top of that and how you can use a simple tool that sits within your Microsoft 365 license to really help alleviate some of that stress. Now, there are other AI tools out there. There's tools like Fixer. There's probably loads more now on the marketplace that you can buy off the shelf. But this video, I'm going to show you something that sits inside your license already that you can experiment with. You can take the things that you need and implement them. See if it works for you. You can do that for free. And then if you decide that you like what you're seeing, what I'm going to demonstrate in the video today, then you can always go and upgrade. And the good thing about this is there are a few options here that mean that potentially the cost of you implementing this AI cleverness into your inbox is not going to cost the earth. So let's just dig in and have a look. Your journey is going to start, as a lot of my videos do, in Power Automate. Getting there is easy, make.powerautomate.com once you're signed into your Microsoft 365 license or use the waffle menu up here. I've shown you that loads of times, so I won't take you through that step. But normally, you'll go and create a Power Automate flow. We've done lots of those videos. But I want you to explore this time down the left-hand side, and when you get to something that looks like a little brain, give that a click. That's the AI Hub. It's had lots of names in the past. It's had lots of capabilities in the past. But there's a great one that sits inside here you may not have seen. If you don't see AI Hub down the left there, click More and you'll get these options here. Again, if you don't see it there, click Discover All. You'll see it on that screen there. I've got it pinned for me so I can get it back nice and easily. Inside these hubs, there are things you can experiment with. This video, we're going to be looking at prompts specifically. If you click Prompts, you'll see there's lots of templates. Microsoft love to give you templates, pre-baked things that you can use. You can go and have an experiment with those, but I'm going to show you a really simple prompt that you can set up that's going to up your email game and help you avoid the dreaded overwhelm. So to do this, click Build Your Own Prompt. Change the name at the top here. I'm going to set one up to analyse my emails for things that come in that it perceives, and when I say it, I mean AI, I want to know that it has determined an email needs my action. Now, you can go and search for good prompts to analyse emails, but I'll just give you a really simple one and then show you how you can enhance that as you go forwards. I'll paste it in first so you can see it in its entirety, and then I'll talk you through the process. So, this prompt says, summarise the given email text. Note that box. I'll show you how that comes about in a minute using the following rules. If you determine based on the text I give you that it's marketing, don't do anything else. Just respond with the word marketing. If you think it requires me to take some urgent action, notice if you think I'm asking AI to make a judgment, perhaps due to tone or content or a due date that soon, respond with urgent action needed. And then I've explained what I would like from it. So summarize who's asked something, use the email address if it's present, be specific about what's been asked, and send back requires action. So you can adapt that if you wish. If you consider it just a passive response to something, maybe someone saying, oh, thanks for that, then it doesn't need my follow-up and just say nothing needed. You can engineer this to be your own rule set. Use plain English, use good language, be as detailed as you can. One little tip is if you want to, you could copy that text, and I'll put this into the YouTube comments as well, so you can just copy it. Pop it into any AI engine and say, make this prompt better. This is what I would like to do. And let it give you its structured prompt analysis and give you better information back that you can put in this. But this is just a really simple test. So I said I'd explain this box here. What that is effectively is dynamic content, information you can pass into the prompt that will get read in at the point at which the prompt gets run. So I've called this email text. You can create them with a little forward slash or using that ad. And the one that I chose was text. Now you give it a title, so you name the thing that is going to effectively create a parameter. I called it email text previously. I also added some sample information. Uh, in the case of that particular one I've added in, I just put things like, John, you need to take urgent action. Just a bit of information that I can use it to test. 
So if you want to have a look at what you've got available to you, have a look in your prompt. We've got email text there. If you want to see the parameters you've set up, you can click these little inputs or outputs. There you can see email text. You can see that, in fact, I'll just add some text. So let's click save on that. So it's just dynamic content, and I'll show you in a minute where that becomes super useful. The next thing to do is just quickly test your prompt. So what's happened there is this prompt has run, but it's taken that information here that was technically passed into it in this little pa parameter, and it's analyzed it. And so you can see there requires action, act urgently by tomorrow, sent by John. Okay, great, fantastic. That's all lovely, but that's not where the magic of this one is. Make sure you save your prompt, and what you will see is that prompt will appear here in your list of recently created prompts, the little icon there. You can use that now, and I'll show you how to use it, but the big power of this is you can give that prompt to other people to use, so anybody can reuse that inbox monitoring tool. Just click share, it's like Power Apps, it's like anything else, you just put a name or a group name in there that's in your tenant, you can share it, you can decide whether they're owners or consumers. So there's some real power there. One other thing before we move on, I just quickly want to show you, is when you click into here and you run that test, notice down here you've got the number three credits. That's the cost in AI terms of performing that prompt and getting that response back. Don't worry about that now, but hold on to that for a moment. So how do we use these? It's all lovely having these prompts, but how can we use these? Well, it's super easy, and this is why I'm showing this video, because I discovered it and thought, that's fantastic. Click Create. For email particularly, I want an automated cloud flow. I want something to just look at my email. So I'm going to click skip there. I don't like to use that wizard. I'm going to add an Outlook trigger. This interface has changed slightly since I last used it about 20 minutes ago. But I'm going to say when a new email arrives, because I want this to watch my inbox. I don't need to worry about any of the parameters there. It's just going to watch my inbox. Here is the important thing to look out for. That is the email address because of the connection that it's going to watch. You can set multiple of these up. I'm going to just configure this so it actually uses my connection. So that's going to watch my inbox now. And the action you want sits under AI capabilities, which for me is right here near the top. What I'm looking for is create text with GPT using a prompt. When you click that and you click the drop down, you'll notice these are the prompts that you created. If you shared this with other people, the prompts, they will be able to see them when they use this action too. It pops up there expecting some text. That is the parameter I set in the prompt. Click dynamic content and let's choose some information from the email that I want to pass to that prompt. So I want to know who it's from. Let me just put some separators in. I want to know the subject. I might want to know the importance. I'm just adding data to this prompt now effectively. And I certainly want the body of the email. And that's pretty much it. I'm just going to click save to show you one other thing here. You're going to get these warnings. It's going to say effectively what this means is AI is not perfect. Be a bit careful. You should pass the resulting action, the output, to a human to do something with. All right. Okay, I get that. That's fine. What you can then do is you can, I'll just put a compose here. You can catch the output and then do things with it. So I'll talk you through this in a second. Uh, let's just catch the output of that action and we'll catch the text that it passed out. And we'll click save. It's going to keep warning me just because it likes to. So I'm going to get an email. I'm going to send certain information from that email off to a prompt that I can change if I want. I can keep the same and I'm going to get some data back. So what I'm going to now do is leave this to run, and I'll show you the results in a second. I sent myself this email from me, obviously. John, this is you sending a test to suggest that something needs to be done. It was an urgent in the subject, act by tomorrow. Okay, so this flow has run, and we can have a look at what's happened. And the reason I put the compose in is just because that makes it super easy to understand what's happening while you're testing and debugging. So it's run successfully, and if I click the compose... This is the output from that prompt. So urgent action needed, you know, forgive me, I've put some stupid things in my prompt. I'll tweak that for the version I copy to you. 
but it's told me act by tomorrow as suggested by the person who sent it so based upon that output that you've grabbed in a compose you can now perhaps put a condition in to your flow which says if the word urgent is in the response or if something comes back which suggests an action do something else so for example i might create a planner task which says all that text in it i might actually use the email connector to go and move that email to a folder which says triage me you can do all sorts of different things but the point i want to show you in this video is that you can quite easily and readily build prompts that are automatically able to be run and act like little mini agents for you now i said at the start i'd mention cost Cost is an important factor when deciding whether you're going to implement this. If we go into the AI hub, it's not immediately obvious how much that prompt has cost. But I can reassure you, I've run this with a little bit of capacity that we have over the course of the last day, 24 hours, with two email addresses. And it doesn't seem to be piling up huge credit usage. Remember earlier I pointed out those credits. A lot of the documentation suggests you can see your credit usage here, but I didn't find that. So what I tend to do is I will go to the Power Platform Admin Center. And from here, we're talking about usage in an environment. I have this production environment set up. So if you go to your environment where you set that Power Automate flow up, again, the information tells you to go to resources, but you don't see what you're looking for under that resources. Where you'll find it is on the left-hand navigation under capacity within resources. Click that, and if you scroll down a little bit, you may miss it. You're looking for AI builder credits. You can see here, I've got 500 of 500 assigned. I've been using this for a day and a half now, using these tests, performing examples for the videos. So far, I don't seem to be using my credits. I'm sure at some point this number will go up. What you can do is click manage, choose the environment that you want to run these in and assign the available credits to an environment. Now, uh, not that one, not Power Apps Challenges, my mistake. I want to go to Production Zone. You'll see there I've assigned 500 credits, my AI Builder credits. That's why you're seeing that orange bar there. They're dedicated to one environment, so you can't use them elsewhere. Now, what Microsoft say is that every call that you make uses credits. A small call, like you've seen, seems to use about three credits. That may vary for you. Large calls sending large amounts of data will no doubt use more credits. So it's important to understand that you will have some level of capacity. Now, if you take a free trial of AI Builder, you'll get some capacity out the box. Try it. See what usage it gives you. Microsoft say that if you're willing to pay for the AI Builder add-on, which is about £375 per month, you'll get a million credits, which to me seems an awful lot but I'd encourage you to monitor and check when you're testing to see what happens. The reason you're seeing 500 here is because we've got a Power Apps Premium license. So it's a per user license. One person can build as many apps as they want using the Dataverse. As a result of that, you get 500 credits included. The cost of that, I can't remember exactly, but it's about 14 to 18 pounds. It's not huge. So it's worth experimenting. Multiple people can use your prompts that expense might be worth it for multiple people to reduce a bit of their overhead on their inbox. This is definitely one to experiment with and not take my example verbatim, but I hope it's illuminated a new option that might be there for you that you can use with your inbox. So go and experiment. Please do comment on this video and tell me what you're doing with it, how it works for you, what you're seeing, because this is quite new capability. I'd also encourage you to subscribe, please do, because that helps me keep making these videos, and I'll see you in the next one.